Clad boys, not yet, anyway. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the boat gang. All right, we got the Sonic Wake V2 on the block. <laughs> As you guys can see, we had a uh, we had a little a little uh, tumble. <laughs> we tore some shit up. All right, so um. Today we're gonna fix it. All right, we got a bent steering rod. I actually went out to my old V2. I got a few extra parts that we're gonna fix it up. Okay, actually gonna show you guys how to get some adjustability out of your stock strut and install a Frankenstein servo. Okay, so uh, stick around. Big B with Anclet RC. You got to have your stuff right when you run an 8S in this boat. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You can't run into the wind. <laughs> and, you know, you can't let the boat blow off the water because she's heavy. Okay. So, we, we, we broke the, the steering horn, the, the, the servo horn here. We got to replace that. Like I said, I'm going to put a servo in there. Uh, with the rudder, you know, the steering linkage rod that can be bent in back into shape that's no big deal you know it's all really fixable now um these holes that you you screw your your rudder back in with they're actually it's actually capped off in there you see that it's capped off so you're gonna need to drill it out uh and you know i i guess we're we're gonna have to pick two two options i got two options we could either you know drill it out and through nut and bolt it with a washer back in it with a nut you know and that's gonna basically like lock the rudder into place it ain't going nowhere okay or or we can drill it out lightly drill it out use that new plastic where the cap's at basically as our our nut you know through drill it and put a longer screw just put a longer screw in there Okay, now, now doing that, if, or no, I guess I should say, when we flip the boat again, if we land uh, tail first, it may pull our rudder back out. Okay, if we through bolt it with a nut and washer on the back, it may rip the whole transom out. The, the reason I say that, my, my previous V2, I actually cracked my transom basically from from here all the way to here okay and i think it was because i threw nut and bolted the, the rudder on you feel me so whenever i crashed the rudder didn't rip out like we did here it pulled the whole transom out with it okay so i think i'm going to drill lightly drill it out basically tap new threads in there and uh just use a longer screw Okay, you could do it how you want to. Now, you could do it how you want. You could put a backer plate back here with washers and nut and all that. And that may be a good route. But I think I'm just going to use longer screws. And then the next time it rips out, of course, I'm going to have to put nuts and washers and backer plate and all that. But for time being, I'm going to go ahead and just mount it so it'll pull back out. Just, like, just how they have it okay now uh let's go ahead and get started on it and i'll talk about the strut in here in a second all right, so i'm basically going to push this steering rod back through and um i'm gonna go ahead and take off this this connector here all right boom all right just take that guy there off we'll go ahead and pull this rudder linkage out the boat pretty simple okay go ahead and un undo our cooling line really really all we need to do really all we need to do is bend this back into shape get a hammer tap on it whatnot and you can get it back into shape all right i'm not going to fool with it 
I'm not going to fool with it right now. I actually got a whole freaking bag of uh, parts for a V2. So um, I'm just going to steal. I'm going to steal the rod. All right, I got my trim tabs. Old rudder bracket, servo, bunch of screws, long screws. We'll use those here in a second. And a new servo arm. Okay, so... I'll go ahead and throw this back in there. I'm not going to use that. We'll just use the old one. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, these these polycarbonates, they uh, you know, they're they got their limitations. They're tough. Don't get me wrong. They do have their limitations, though. You know. Um, the nice thing about a polycarbonate hull, you know, the, the hull itself is actually uh, fairly affordable. So if you crack it, break it, just get a new hull. And uh, everything's pre-drilled from the factory. So you basically, all you have to do is take everything off your old boat and put it all on your new boat. You know, that's the benefit of a polycarbonate hull. Um, I've been through two sonic wake hulls and I've been a v1 and a v2 hull and I've been through two blackjack 42 holes but you know I actually uh you know I, I actually try to entertain you guys you know try to I try to get speed I like going fast you know and showing you guys this and that and um a lot of times <laughs> Things go bad. They go south. And uh, I break stuff, you know. Which, it's it's all part of the hobby. It's all part of the hobby. You break something, you know, it's uh, part of the hobby. You know, it gives you, gives you a chance to use your hands and, 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 and fix something, you know. Now, that's one of the reasons why I quit running RC cars. They actually break too often for my liking. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like running my boats. Now I break them, but it, it's nine times out of ten I can fix a, a boat with uh, the things I have laying around. I, look at there. I put the damn same steering rod back on. <laughs> shot out. Shot out. So, um, like I said, you can just bend this back into shape. I'm just going to... I'm just going to put my old one back on. There goes the rudder. Jeez. Just like uh, like my old V2. You know what I mean? Um, this rudder, like, you see it sharpened. I had hit something with my rudder, and I had to modify the rudder. So I just sharpened it up so I can get the boat back on the water. You know, so um, I'm going to grab a drill and a drill bit. So our, our screw, our screw, 3.8, and my drill bit I'm going to use is 3.5. Actually, I'm going to grab one size smaller. So when I drill through that end cap on the inside, 3.4. I'm using a 3.4 millimeter drill bit. A 3.4 millimeter drill bit. And, uh... That way I don't tear up the existing threads, you know, whatever's left. I'm just gonna drill through that end cap, you know. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Like I said, you can you can through through bolt it, but you may run into you may run into issues ripping the whole transom out your boat. You, you feel me? Longer screw here. Unfortunately, it's an iron screw. I don't have any stainless steel screws, but it's basically 20 millimeters long. Okay, some Loctite marine adhesive here. We're going to put on the rudder. Okay, and I've got a 20 millimeter long screw here. Same size as what came out of it. I didn't oversize the diameter of the screw I oversized the length of the screw I'm going to use the existing threads that are in there and 
when we drill through that cap we'll have a little bit of thread new threads that we're going to start so you actually need to put a little bit of pressure on the screw when you're screwing it in okay so you can make new threads you know what i'm saying and that marine adhesive is going to seal it up and actually help keep keep the rudder on the boat but if we have a bad tumble the rudder should break loose you, you know what i'm saying so this is pretty much done i'm just going to get these screws tightened up and we'll go ahead and change out the servo um, this servo it's a frank the reason i call it a frankenstein servo is um they're actually good servos the motor burn up in one servo and then another servo the gears quit working so i transferred the good gears from one servo into the servo with the bad motor or the good motor you know what i'm saying yeah, just you know switch the gears out rebuilt it frankenstein they're actually pretty good for the money they're pretty good Okay, that's on there. All right, we pull these four screws. One, two, three, four. Pull the servo out. Eight screws total. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I can actually use this servo right here for one of my smaller boats. Um, it's a wonder I didn't strip the gears out. If I had a metal servo horn on here, I would have stripped those gears out of my servo in that crash. It broke that servo horn opposed to stripping out the gear. So I can use this, like say in my little Blackjack 24, which I'm still running the stock freaking servo from two years ago in that Blackjack 24, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Okay, so pull those four out, boom, put the new one in. Just remember the orientation of where your servo horn is. Servo horns place toward the transom so you wouldn't want to put the servo horn up here because your linkage is going to line up all right so i got my transmitter on and i'm going to plug in my speed control i got my servo plugged in and i zeroed out my steering it's on zero steering trim and uh, that's basically going to center my servo before I put my servo horn on. Okay, so it's basically centered now. Okay, going to grab our serve. Jeez, butter fingers, boy, butter fingers. All right, grab our servo horn. Try not to drop it again. I'm going to basically go straight up and down if I can. That looks pretty good and I'm gonna tighten up these screws they already have Loctite on them this is the servo horn that comes with the servo here now I gotta find the little screw that goes in the top this one basically gonna put this screw in to hold my horn on okay now we're gonna run our steering rod into the connector okay Go ahead and mount up your servo put all four screws back in it so once you get your servo mounted up before you put your grub screw in your connector just make sure it's centered make sure your rudder is centered basically in line with the bracket here in line with the keel of the boat and uh, once you get it centered up just put your grub screw in there with some loctite okay so basically got mine centered and gonna drive it home okay so that's done we're gonna hook up the cooling line that's pretty simple all right and I'll show you how to get some adjustability on your strut 
All right, so we got her all back together. Good as new, okay, good as new. So uh, with your strut, okay, so if you want to tune this boat using your strut, you can go about it two different ways, okay? Uh, the first way is probably the easiest way to do it, okay? Basically take this back screw right here out. Take that back screw all the way out, nut and bolt, take it out. This is the V1 strut, okay? You take this back screw right here out, that will, that hap, just running that single screw right there will actually enable you to to move your, your stinger up and down, positive and negative. It'll hinge on that one screw. You feel me? If you want to adjust or tune this boat using your stinger, you're, you're definitely going to have to basically bend your stuff into positive or negative. Well, negative or positive, up or down. You're going to have to put a little bend in it. So when you tune your boat, you need to really kind of think about it and know which way you want to go with your strut because you're going to have to put a minute bend in it right here. Now, I've already tuned my strut. Yep, I'm running both screws. Okay, I actually took my my strut, my strut barrel off. I pulled it completely off the boat. Pulled both of these screws, bushing, flex cable, pulled the whole strut barrel off. And I basically elongated both of these holes up and down. Okay, I took a file or a Dremel will work and elongated the holes up and down. Elongated both holes so I can move my strut up or down. Okay, so um, I'm, the boat comes with just a little bit of negative. Okay, I'm, I moved mine to where it's just neutral. Okay, that's where I'm running mine at. I uh, may go positive it may go negative later on but i actually have the ability to do it now all right just elongated the holes or you can go the simple way just take the back screw out and you can use that uh, forward screw as a pivot point you can adjust this boat you can you know you can get you some adjustability now i actually have i actually have the tf uh tfl stinger adjustable stinger and the Mad Lizard adapter plate that I probably will put on here. But uh, I'm going to run this one right here for the time being, you know, uh, for a little while anyway, until that cable lets loose. And I'll get, I'll put this TFL stinger on there. So, uh, yep, we're back in business. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Sorry about that long video. I know a lot of you guys was wanting a shop video. Um, I actually recommend these batteries right here for you guys for this boat. If you have this boat and you're running 6S, uh, or 8S. He has the 8800, I think, in an 8S version, too. They're long, skinny packs, and they're boss. They're boss. Stock prop, 60 mile an hour. HCLHC. High capacity. Okay. So, um, check out MCMC. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.